Welcome to Weld.com, home of TIG time. I'm Mr. TIG. Now, you know, I do a lot of seminars and training on the welding of 4130 chrome molly. And you ask the question, why are you using 4130? Well, 4130 is a stronger material, but you have to be very concerned because there's a little higher content in carbon in 4130. So most of the structures that we deal with are lightweight structures like you'll see in a kit plane of sorts. Uh, even in the racing industry, most of the structures are lightweight structures. But that's not what this class is going to be about. This class is going to be about 120 thousandths of an inch wall thickness or greater. And believe me, the rules change. Maybe not the filler materials, and you may be welding it a certain way and, and you're successful, but if you're having uh, premature cracking or failures uh, in, in your weldment, we're going to cover those in this session. I want to do a shout out to a couple of industries because they're dealing with heavy wall 4130. Uh, one of them is the monster trucks. Uh, you'll see various organizations uh, including SCORE, Wide Open Baja, HDRA, and we're going to be working with them to establish welding and fabrication seminars in Southern California. And all of this is going to be in accordance with off-road needs for the racing community. So we're going to get started. 120 thousandths wall thickness requires something different. One is preheat. In almost all the other classes that I teach, we don't talk about preheat. But in this particular case, we are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about how to tack up your structure. And of course, we pre-clean this. We pre-tacked it. And make sure you get the oxides off at least a quarter of an inch away from your weld. We're going to talk about TIG welding. We're not going to discuss any other welding processes. Like I say, if you're having success, don't change anything. But what we're going to do is we're going to do a two-pass operation. So if you want to get the most success out of your Baja frame, we want you to cold tack it just to hold it in place. We're going to do a root pass. We're going to penetrate that root. That's where most of your strength comes in. So let's get that root pass in there, and then we'll do a secondary pass, and it'll just be a, a one fill pass, if you will. So I'm going to go ahead and put my gear on. We're going to do a, a preheat. I happen to have a little temp stick here that's going to tell me when I preheat to 300 degrees. Now it's kind of a chalky substance when you mark it and as soon as I hit 300 degrees this is going to turn liquid. So uh, let me get my gear on and we'll show you how it works. Okay, I have this thing uh, tacked in about six spots. You could tack it 8, 10, 12, whatever, uh, whatever you desire. Uh, it, you can't put too many tacks on there. And I tacked it cold. There's absolutely no preheat whatsoever. So what I want to do is I want to preheat this up to 300 degrees. So I'm going to use my oxygen and uh, acetylene rig to do that. Uh, once I get to 300, then I'm going to weld it with a root pass. And it really doesn't matter which direction you go in TIG welding. You have such fine control. You can break it into quadrants. You can go all the way around, uh, uh, whatever's more comfortable for you. So uh, I'll demonstrate that to you right now. You know, some of you may have an oxygen acetylene rig with a, with a, a cutting tip on there. I want to make sure that you flip this little lever back because all we're using this for is preheating. So uh, I'll turn a little bit of the uh, acetylene on. And uh, very quickly after it lights, I'll turn the oxygen on. Now I'm going to adjust it to where I get close to a neutral flame. I don't want oxidizing and I don't want a carburizing flame. I just want to do a little preheat without any contamination. And yeah, so fine tuning this tip. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start the preheat process. And we're, we're at room temperature right now, and it's going to take probably three or four or five minutes to get this to 300 degrees. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, that didn't take long at all. If you notice, this is melting, so I've reached the 300 degrees that I need. Make sure you shut off the acetylene first. 
but I'm at 300 degrees, it's preheated, and you're probably asking the question, why do I have to preheat this? Well, the reality is when you make a weld and this material is cold, as soon as you get to the welding temperature and it goes liquid, as soon as it re-solidifies, it quenches very quickly. And in that grain boundary, there's this very nasty grain called martensite. Now, in heavier wall thickness, martensite has great tensile strength, but when you get into side load impacts, like you're, you're doing in a Baja buggy of some sort, that side load impact will actually crush that grain and the weld will give out prematurely right in the heat affected zone. So take a look and see if you're failing in that heat affected zone. So we're preheated at 300 degrees. It's, it's going to help that Martin side. So you'll have a little better grain in there. Okay, I got this thing preheated. 300 degrees and I'm putting in a root bass, so it's kind of a deep penetrating root bass. And like I say, it doesn't matter what direction you go with TIG welding, because you have finite control. So I'm only able to weld about an inch, and I reposition myself. Now, getting down into the root is important, so torch angle is critical at this point. And it's, it's welding up very nicely. Welding at DC, straight polarity, DC minus. And when you terminate your wells, do it slowly so you don't leave any crater cracking. You know, whenever possible, I like to run uh, in the 1G position. It's just easier and things flow a lot better. So if you can do that, get your part in that position. You can see I'm really getting down into the, uh, the root there. You know, when you get out of position like this, you can only go so far, but I like to ramp up slowly, dab, until I get totally out of position, back off on my amperage, and let it cool. Okay, so you can see that I've, I've actually got half of it done right now. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over. You know, actually welding this on a car is easier than doing it in a small sample because you can use the frame of the car to manipulate yourself around. So, um, turn it over. I'll do the same thing over here. Then I'll show you the root pass. Now I'm approaching a tack and what's really critical is just to act like it's not there and weld right through it and absorb it 100%. Now I, I like to initiate the arc and just ramp up ever so slightly until I get to the right uh, amperage that I need. And you can see that visually with the puddle.
Now, you can see that this is welding really well. And one of the reasons is it's got a great fit up. So take the effort and the time to get a good fit up. Okay, now that I've got the root pass in there, I've inspected it, made sure that I got all the fusion down in the root, and again, this is the critical pass, the root pass. I'm going to put a secondary pass on there. Now, if you want, you can put a secondary pass on with the MIG process or the stick process. TIG is pretty slow, but TIG is cleaner and you have much more control on it. So if you've been trying to do a root pass with the MIG process, just know you don't have the control, and that's why I recommend always going the root pass with TIG. Now, you probably notice I've got a, a glass or a clear cup on here. I don't typically put that on there except to be able to give you vision of the welding. So you can put a ceramic cup on there. I still like a small gas lens. So what I'm gonna do now is I, I have a little bit of underfill here. I wanna make the fillet weld just a little bit larger. And so you may see me weaving just a little bit just to catch the edges, but you don't have to weave a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and put the second pass on and then I'll show you the results. You'll notice that once I get the puddle up to the temperature that I want, the size that I want, I have a really good consistent speed and that's pretty much dependent on each individual. But uh, just take your time and you'll do a good job. Okay, now that we've finished, we've accomplished an awful lot. So let me recap exactly what happened here. We've got 4130 chromoly. It's a 120 thousandths wall thickness, so pretty heavy duty. Our procedure is this. It's cold right now, so we cold tack it, meaning that we can just go ahead and take tack it in six, eight, ten spots. Okay, once we've done that, and we take the oxygen acetylene and we preheat we use a temp stick to 300 degrees. When we do that and touch it, it'll actually melt. You can see when this thing melt, melts like a crayon. So now it, it's heated up and we're protecting it from forming these grains called martensite. 
Okay, now once we've got it all tacked up, we're going to consume those tacks. So we do a root pass. Go ahead and do a root pass any direction, quadrants, as many starts and stops as you need to. Go ahead and do that root pass. Secondly, <clears throat> don't wait any time at all, but go ahead and make sure you've, you've still got it up to 300 degrees Fahrenheit and you put a second pass. Now, second pass is going to fill up the fillet weld and give you a little bit more strength. But remember, about 90% of your strength is going to come from that first pass. Now, as far as filler materials are concerned, we have about three recommendations for you. Now, the number one choice is called ER80SD2. And, and you can pick the diameter that you like. I like 045. Sometimes I'll use 062, but 045, I can get the root pass in there really well. Uh, anyway, ER80S D2 is the number one choice, and there's two or three others if you're using them, it's okay. ER70S2, ER70S6, they all give you the, the tensile strength that you need. So uh, we, we're going to go ahead and talk about the TIG torch and the tungsten. I was using 125 amps for my root pass and 125 amps for my uh, second filler pass. When you're at 125 amps, you have a choice. You can either use 1 16th diameter tungsten, 2% thorate is what I used, or you can go 332. Then again, you can put the ceramic cup on here instead of the clear glass uh, that I'm using just for photo purposes. So I'm on DC, straight polarity. I've got a foot control under here that I can, I can operate. I can vary the amperage. So uh, now that you've seen how to do this, uh, we'd like your comments back. We appreciate you watching. Thanks for watching, Tig Time. I'm Mr. Tig.